Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. I hope everyone enjoyed their extra day of February yesterday. I know that I did. Leap year is honestly, like, it's kind of a crazy phenomenon that we have to add an extra day every single year. And I saw something on social media. It's the fact that on like New Year's Eve or New Year's Day or something, we have an extra like three hours and then it stacks upon itself and then we have to add an extra day or something. I don't know, but leap year is really crazy. I also saw like another post that it was like, um, if we just had 30 days in the calendar year, we wouldn't need a leap year or something like that. I know it's probably based on like the moon, the stars, the constellations. I'm not the girl to ask about like the scientific part of it, but I do know that what that creator was saying, and I forgot who it was, you know, it's a, a mindless scroll. You're like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Right? And um, it was talking about how if uh, every single day, or I'm sorry, every single month was just 30 days, we wouldn't have this problem. Okay? And that just makes sense for my brain because it's March. Happy March 1st. February was crazy insane. Went by so fast. March is here. I'm here for her. I love March. I think it's a great month. Plus, like, I've been really feeling, like, the green aesthetic and honestly, like, lucky and <laughs> being uh, dressed for, like, St. Patrick's Day. I've never, like, really participated, but I'm feeling it this year, okay? Like, I'm definitely feeling it. I wiped down my, like, little calendar in my office, and as I was writing it out, March has... 31 days and guess what my calendar with how Friday is the first um, it, it messes up so I was definitely like cursing the calendar making people because again I know there's a reason to the madness but I'm like dang like if there's 30 days and and it would be like the first was always a Monday Tuesday Wednesday whatever it was <laughs> Um, I'm like, mm, that makes more sense for my brain. So I have like one of the days like slashed in half and it's sharing the same uh, spot as the 24th day of March and the 31st day of March. I'm just excited to welcome springtime. We've had honestly like pretty good weather, but this last week it kind of got chilly, but I'm still wearing the shorts around the house. Okay. It is sweatshirt and short season. Okay. If you can get away with it. Um, and I'm here for it, okay? I am here for the warmer weather and just being able to do things outside again. I've been missing it so very much, okay? I'm just ready for it. But it's Friday, which that means it's Ask Your Gal. It's Logan. I'm here. We're going to answer some listener submitted questions. So I have three for today. Two are like a little shorter and then one's a little bit longer of a question. If you would like to have your question answered on the podcast, you can submit it at um, the Instagram handle Golden Hour Drip. You can DM me there. You can email me at goldenhourdrip at gmail.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can always comment down below. So let's get into it. The first question Favorite piece of your morning routine? Okay. My morning routine is getting better, guys. I was in a bit of a slump. Okay, January, I don't think I woke up earlier than 6.45. Like, it was 7, 7.30. And I really haven't been that much of like a late wake girl upper, a late, late to rise. I've usually always woken up pretty early. And so it was very like, it was off brand for me to be waking up so late and just feeling so tired. I don't know if it was just like the stress from the holidays or what, but I was not feeling it. I was just tired, I was exhausted, and I wanted to cozy up in bed. So I'm kind of getting my momentum back. I'm feeling much better about my morning routine. I think having something that forces you to wake up, like a commitment, um, is really, really helpful because you know you can't bail on it. Like you have to show up, you have to go full force. Um, that's always helpful for like getting me up. But I would not say that my alarm clock is my favorite part of my morning routine. If I had to pick like my favorite piece of the morning routine, it would honestly have to be 
drinking my cup of coffee and puzzling, okay? It, and I do like making the cup of coffee. I like to measure out the grounds. I like to press it. I like to have my milk froth. I hate cleaning the machine, right? Like I hate cleaning it. Um, I need like some coffee, like um, assigned towels because right now we're just using like my flower towels in the kitchen and about 90% mm, of those towels have coffee stands on them. So I really need to find like a smaller towel, maybe a washcloth, like I need to buy some washcloths to be able to clean like my little um, milk frothing wand because it's just, it's a little hectic. Okay, so I, I always do that routine. It's part of my morning ritual. But I think having the mug and sitting down or starting whatever part of my day, like if I'm going uh, to go put on my makeup, like having a little beverage to be able to take a sip has been amazing. Okay, it's been really, really good. And the aspect of like not being on my phone and puzzling and not listening to anything at all. Like I don't have my phone out. Um, I try to leave it in the bedroom, like where it's charging, which again, that's not like super great having it charge in the bedroom, but I'm leaving it in the bedroom. I'm making my way into the kitchen. I'm making myself and Garrett a cup of coffee and then I'm sitting down at our kitchen table and I am puzzling. Okay. I've been working on the same puzzle for the last couple weeks and it's been going great. I'm finally getting some really big pieces done. I don't look at the box. I think that is cheating, but I've really been enjoying that peace and quiet and just like hanging out with myself and hanging out with the puzzle. It's been great. It's been amazing. And it would definitely have to be like my favorite piece of my morning routine. Next question. What is the biggest green flag in a friendship? Okay. Friendships, relationships. I think you have to go into a friendship or a relationship with the same mindset. You have to be not looking for anything serious, but like open to it. Because I think that if you try too hard in any sort of relationship, like I have, um, you know, people in my life who I thought to myself, oh my gosh, they are beautiful or they have several positive attributes. So I'm like, that's amazing. I want to emulate some part of that, right? Because usually we want to be friends or date someone where we see those positive things and we're like, ah, I like that. Or yes, that is um, something I see in myself as well, right? Like Garrett and I are both driven. That's a good relationship. Um, me and my friends, like if I think about my friends, we keep it lighthearted. We have like a lot of stability. Also, I can rely on them. Like we have a lot of the similar, same or similar um, qualities. And I think that's really great. So, um, I think, I guess this is kind of varying into like a red flag with relationships, but I think of someone or yourself, because we have to be the greatest green flag in a relationship or friendship is going to be yourself. Um, and you are going to attract what you are, um, being and who you are. So if you are putting out like fun, I want to say like connective, but maybe that's not like the right phrasing. Like if you're open, okay? Like if you're open to like good people who are going to support you um, and you're also being that sort of friend, that's the greatest green flag. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on the other person and what they bring to the relationship or what they bring into the friendship. But you are part of that friendship, right? Like it's half of you it takes two to tango. Like you have to be willing to be vulnerable, to be a good friend, um, to set appropriate boundaries. And I truly think that if a friendship, you know, if you have a friend that is a walking red flag, right? Everyone loves to throw out that terminology or throw out that verbiage. But if you have someone in your life who's creating any sort of conflict or is not like adding to you in one way or another, you have allowed them to treat you like that, right? Because if you don't allow them to treat you like that, you're not gonna be friends anymore and you're putting up like healthy boundaries. 
I hope that you're enjoying today's podcast episode. Just a quick interruption to let you know that Golden Hour Drip has a weekly newsletter that comes out. This has bonus content, weekly updates, and future event information. If you haven't already, go down to the show notes, click the link, and join today. Now, back to the show. So if you have a friend who's always late, um, who you guys schedule something and then they're a half hour late and they text you, oh, I'm about ready, um, I'll be there in 10 minutes, you know, that's not like respecting my time. Um, and if it were you, you would want your friend to show up there as well. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, like a friend, um, a green flag is like them showing up on time, a red flag is them not being, um, not being conscientious, not being uh, respectful of your time, right? Like that's would be like the red flag part of it. Um, but you, especially if it continuously happens, are allowing that person to treat you that way. So putting up a boundary and saying, Hey, like, um, last time you were, you know, 30 minutes late, it didn't make me feel good. Um, putting like increments of time, Hey, like, yes, I would love to go out for coffee with you. Yes, Wednesday at 4 p.m. works great, but I've, I have a meeting at 4.45 that I'll have to get to. Um, kind of putting like a time limit on it. That helps set a boundary. That's just like a scenario, right? But I think the greatest green flag in a friendship or relationship is you. You are the puzzle piece. You are, again, on the puzzles, but before you start looking at a friend and thinking, oh my gosh, like, are you a good person? Are you a bad person? You first have to like, look at yourself. How am I showing up as a friend? Like, am I being courteous? Am I being respectful? Am I um, including them in plans? Do I have a positive attitude? Am I bringing all the crap from my day and just bringing the vibe down, right? There should still be like a supportive um, system. So if you did have a bad day, okay, like I'm gonna talk about it, but, I'm also gonna ask them about their day. I'm gonna be like, how was your day? Or not bring it up constantly. You know the red flags that you have, but truly the biggest green flag in a relationship, the greatest, sorry, I don't know what just came out. The greatest green flag in any relationship is you, okay? And it also helps model how you want to be treated by treating your friends in that way. So, uh, stop picking apart other people. Maybe that's not the answer this person was looking for, but that's the answer that I gave today, okay? Third and final question. All my friends are on book talk and I want to get into reading, but I've been, I've never been able to stick to it. Okay, books are very popular right now. It seems like everyone is on Goodreads, everyone is on Book Talk, everyone has these huge libraries of everything they're reading, right? Um, and I could see how if you weren't a reader, you would feel a little bit isolated or out of the loop, out of the club. Um, and I'm with you. Like, it sucks when you don't like the same things that everybody else is talking about and I'm really proud of you for wanting to get into reading because reading is so good for the brain it is so good from the disassociation from your phone um, you are going into a world of imagination you are um, putting yourself through different scenarios I saw something the other day it was like you're the smartest people um, watch reality TV and while I know <laughs> books are not reality TV. Her reasoning behind it was anybody who watches reality TV is seeing the situations, right? Like because there is some added drama, some natural drama, and they have all of these dynamic relationships. So you as a viewer are watching these dynamic relationships. And then you also have the um, little interviews, right? where the um, person who's on the reality TV show is like, hey, this is my take on it. Like, I um, was very emotional in the moment because she's done this to me, she's done this to me, so I decided to spill red wine on her dress because she is so mean to me. 
Where else have we seen this? In a book, okay? When you're reading a book, you get dynamic relationships, you get different settings, and often, not only do we get the <laughs> insight from the main character, but we also sometimes get side story characters as well and get to see where their perspective is, where their brain is. So I fully believe reality TV and books are very similar, right? You are being exposed to so many different dynamics. You are being exposed to storylines, uh, being exposed to conflict at times, right? Like, oh, what? I didn't like what you said, or maybe you're into history books because don't get me twisted, okay? Reality TV and a history book can still be the same, even if it is nonfiction, okay? Where it is fiction and nonfiction, yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, like a historical book, you're still getting the insights because people and human nature are like that. So even if it's a historical book, even if it's an educational book, even much so, right? Like you are getting the knowledge and you are getting more information. So I really applaud you. I think that's great. I think it's amazing that you want to get into books to help with that because it's overwhelming. There's a ton of books all over. Everyone has their opinions. I would try to read a, a book that should have, you want to have interest in the book that you're reading. Just because all of your friends are, um, you know, reading the Twilight series or maybe something that you don't necessarily like that much, find a book that you like. If it's your attention span isn't um, being held by the book, maybe purchasing the audio version as well. So you have the audio book playing and then you have the physical book in front of you and you're reading as they're talking. Maybe that could be helpful for you because you're listening and you're reading and your attention's on the book. Maybe setting a timer for 10 minutes, five minutes, reading it out loud. Sometimes when my brain is like absolutely too loud and I have all these thoughts going and I'm maybe I have this big situation going on in my personal life and I'm trying to read the book so that I can get away from it, right? Like, um, I will notice sometimes like I will read the whole page and I will not have gotten anything from it. It is so helpful to sit and read aloud and I will read it word for word, like favorite piece of your morning routine, like very not like just I'm reading the words and that helps my brain get into the book because I'm reading it um, and my brain is not allowed to wander. I pretend that I'm in school again, that this is the paragraph and the popcorn reading that is for me that I'm supposed to be reading and I put on a performance. Okay, so try that. Maybe not in public, okay? <laughs> Maybe at home with a book, but really find something that you are gonna have some interest in. It doesn't matter if everybody else is reading a certain type of genre. You are allowed to read what interests you and don't put so much pressure on yourself. I feel like everybody is like finishing books like so fast. They're like, oh, I read 20 books in a month. Well, that's cool, that's amazing, but other people might not be on that uh, fast reading grind. So don't compare yourself to other readers. Know that you're gonna read at your own pace and it's more about your brain. It's more about, you know, disconnecting from the media world. And I really applaud you. Even wanting to try something that makes you uncomfortable is an amazing step. Going to a bookstore, picking up the physical book can be like really good to get you excited and to think, oh my gosh, like I cannot wait to read this. Um, putting in your bag, setting an alarm on your phone, like, oh, it's time to read. Put it, make it part of your morning or nighttime routine. Whenever I want to start a habit, I always make it really easy to buy into it, right? Like. Um, if I want to use my tr my walking treadmill, I'm going to have it under my desk. If I want to use a certain skincare, I'm going to put it on top of my counter right next to my eye contact case, right? Make it easy. Make it part of your routine. I believe in you. And if you need any recommendations, you can follow me on Goodreads, okay? Um, but thank you everyone who sent in a question for Ask the Gals. I love these short Friday episodes. They're so fun to me. Um, just answering questions and, and chatting with you. I just, honestly, it's become like one of my favorite parts. 
Um, so yeah, it can be a short question. Like two of these were, all of them were pretty short today, right? Like they're um, pretty concise, short questions. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. Um, it can be what you want to share with the class, okay, with the gals, but um, it will always be anonymous. So thank you so much for listening to this week's episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.